Cause I'll be sparking and rushing mad like inside the dark Call me no snatcher, just a brother for the rapture I hang live, hold it on strong, hard to capture Extravagant, resurrect the track and it's militant And I react like a con and start killing It's manifesting, the guards work like appliances Dealing in my sleep like a lot Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Naruto Explain here, bringing you guys another board to Naruto Next Generations discussion. And today, I want to talk to you guys about a controversial decision that was made in the last board to manga chapter, chapter 71, that has a lot of fans upset, which is Kishimoto's decision to have the alliance between Ada, Code, and Damon broken up and have Code tossed out of here faster than Naruto rejecting the idea of Ichiraku Ramen being closed down permanently. So in today's video, I wanted to talk to you guys about whether or not this was a good idea to rip the band-aid off of the cyborg alliance as quickly as we saw the short answer i'm glad that ada and code are no longer in the alliance the long answer i strongly believe that this is something that has the potential to have more long-term groundwork to build a stronger threat level if it is executed properly this is ambitious right here so while kishimoto does have a penchant for parallels and this would be a twist on the whole concept of having two potential threats where like in the naruto manga during the search of tsunade arc orochimaru was viewed as a threat and the looming specter the akaski was viewed as the threat built up and during this time orochimaru had peaked as a villain and orochimaru had just had to retreat following the legendary signing three-way deadlock battle i think things right now are different and it has potential for something refreshing and i'll explain to you how so code being broken off from ada and damon it was something that needed to happen outside of the whole idea of just these three working together so overpowered you got one character who can see everything going on everything that happens in the past up to moment of birth another character who can reflect all attacks as long as he's touching somebody in the area and another character who has claw marks that allow him to kind of use a baby flying raijin and his power level goes beyond jigen along with the other two those three working together in tandem that was just too much to overcome however aside from that as well as the literal foreshadowing that this was always going to happen in the very first chapter where ada met code and how she consistently was talking shit to him the entire time of their alliance this was needed in order for the story to progress forward that trio was lacking in a few ways needed for them to be an effective villain group together to use wrestling terminology they were heels but they lacked any real heat with the audience the audience being us the readers a heel with no heat from the audience where the audience is genuinely rooting for their downfall believes it can actually happen they're eagerly waiting for the babyface hero to take down the heel and with each underhanded thing that the heel does to avoid justice the audience grows even more to dislike them a heel who can't pull off those elements is a failure the trio of ada damon and code that was a failed heel faction and i think that this is by design in order to build code up as a villain by first tearing him down via betrayal the calculated and patient style of ada clashed with code's more impulsive and simple-minded nature and he wasn't fully obedient to her in the way that damon was and it's even been foreshadowed that ada does doesn't have full control over Damon. While we as the audience knew that this was going to be more fuel for their impending betrayal, which we just saw, the methods of this group didn't work on the audience. Sure, Code got a very brief pop during his fights with Boruto and Kawaki, but how much of that pop was more so from the revelation that Code revealed that the karma was being used incorrectly by Boruto and Kawaki and there was new world building as a result of that that was more about the information and less about code as a villain there was more of a pop when momoshiki became a walking savage while talking trash when he was toying around with code than there was with anything code did as a villain in the past the same thing when kawaki killed borto kawaki got more heat then code got out of anything code did in a year of buildup he was falling flat as a villain even damon felt like more of a threat than code largely due to his reflection ability and the statements his combat power went over jigen you couldn't fully move forward with these three working together because it would be too bland which is why you had to rip the band-aid off and use this as an opportunity to get him over even more than he previously was similar to how right now the wwe has judgment day where they turned on the person who assembled the faction edge and now the wwe is building edge up to get them even more over with fans code needed to be betrayed to get over with fans i.e readers but that process can only start after we see him at his lowest point and we see him have to retreat we have code steaming over everything that happened to him we have ada and amato playing a game of chess with one another in the short term that we as readers will be engaged with because we don't know amato's true motives and 
Ada's loyalty is purely to herself and her own goals, and she can't be considered a friend or a foe. Damon is just along for the ride wherever Ada goes. More enemy sides and uncertain alliances means more potential for developments and events, all while code is forced into stimulation that forces him to evolve. There is nothing scarier than having a crave follower who feels desperate and abandoned. Code worshiped the Otsutsuki and losing Jigen, the vessel that he admired, and losing Ishiki, the Otsutsuki who he worshiped as a god, was a good start but we saw Code give in to that basic human need to feel wanted, desired, and part of something bigger than himself, and he substituted one obsession with the second obsession for Ada, someone who clearly didn't care for him, which is almost a mirror to how Ishiki truly didn't care for Code until he had no real choice but to be forced to rely on him. Once again, Code has been abandoned, and this time he's forced to stand on his own. Before he went looking for Ada, he did so because he heard Jigen speak about her, but that was Code following Jigen's path. He went looking for revenge because he was following Ishiki's path. He hadn't had an independent path of his own. Right now, for the first time in his life, Code is being forced to stand on his own two feet and figure shit out for himself. He was given a bag of shit and he was told you gotta take shit and turn it into lemonade. And for the first time, the rage that he's feeling isn't being fueled by Jigen or Ishiki. Right now, Code is being forced to think like a hustler. And there's a reason why I use turn shit into lemonade. And if you can't figure out how that's possible, that just means you ain't got that hustler gene in you. Now, it's important to note that yes, his hate for Kawaki comes from the fact that Jigen favored Kawaki more because Jigen saw Kawaki could replace him as a vessel for Ishiki. His hate for Kawaki also came from the fact that Ishiki needed Kawaki, but Ishiki for his living lifespan never had a need for code. His hate for Naruto and company came from the fact that he viewed them as being responsible for Ishiki's death. However, the betrayal by Ada and Damon, this is different. His pride was absolutely shattered. Code went from saying, I feel like I can't lose to anyone anymore to Damon hitting him with a Roman Reigns Superman punch in a Stone Cold Stoner before Damon sat back down to watch the new episode of My Little Baby Bum. With Ada, his confession for love was rejected. His offer to be of use to her was rejected. And Code gained a new motivation to upgrade his body to Otsuski, but the reason this time is conflicted. Will his love for Ada outweigh the broken heart that she gave him? However, that's just the first layer for this character of Code. The actions that he takes right now, that he's desperate, abandoned, and forced to fight his way out of a corner are going to be what forces him to go from being a follower and be a leader. That's why this faction had to be blown up. It was not working. How can a villain group gain heat with readers when you have an uncharismatic villain in code, especially in the manga version of the story, who doesn't know what it means to be a leader on top of not having any charisma? It's damning of him that Kawaki killing Boruto got more heat than anything Code was able to accomplish in an entire year of buildup. And before anyone starts saying, well, Code was just speaking the entire time, he hardly did anything. I will say broaden your horizons. And if you want a battle shown in example, I will say go read Bleach. Aizen had a lot of dialogue dumps and he didn't lift a finger for a couple of years in the manga, but maintained a presence of being a real threat. You don't have to catch a body to be a good villain. You don't have to be in constant physical altercations to be a good villain. You just can't be lacking in charisma or presence either. There are ways it can be done. As I continue through my read through of My Hero Academia, before I start posting those videos on Kryptonian Saiyan, I see why so many people made the comparison to Code and Shigaraki, saying that Shigaraki had some of the same issues, albeit differently, when it comes to being viewed as a joke villain, but he became a badass once he was built up properly. I can see why people want that from Code. What will Code do right now? Attack Konoha and try to get Boruto and Kawaki immediately before Ada, Damon, and Amato can reach the village? I mean, it's possible, but the idea of Code biding his time to work on himself, grow into gaining the traits that are needed for him to become a leader and becoming more methodic would serve him a lot better. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Code wanting to destroy everything Kawaki holds dear. That is fine. That is enough motivation on top of the Ishiki and Ada motivations. But heading to Konoha like this, knowing that two people who are stronger than him are on their way to the village as well as nothing short of suicide and I don't think Code is ready to have Damon shove a pacifier up his ass again. Right now, I think his best option is to accomplish whatever attendant business he still has left in the human realm. And then I think his next route is to take Bug with him to the Tintel's dimension. And as a writer, 
Kishimoto's best option is to revamp code with the benefit of a time skip. Time skips work in Battle Shonen for a reason. They give the author a tabla rasa, a blank slate to adjust the world building in a way to create more conflict, level up heroes and make protagonists more deadly, but it's a break glass in case of emergency moment to shake things up that only works if it is done correctly. Naruto's manga had multiple time skips. It wasn't just the two and a half year time skip that everybody points to. That's just the most visible one because you had the drastic character changes, but the reason why Masashi Kishimoto could pull off having six significant time jumps in the time throughout a 72 volume manga was because each time we emerged from a time jump, he was able to effectively raise the stakes. We saw characters clearly improve in skill and power, and we saw the villains or heroes benefit from changing the world's circumstances. Boruto's story as it heads into his first major time skip that will be more visible than the two time jumps that we've had so far is going to need more than just character redesigns because characters will be visibly older in that scenario and it'll be a good merchandise moment but it's going to need a dna chain and i think that this was the third to last major step that was needed for this to happen just like how we saw a time jump in chainsaw man between part one and part two the retooling that was done to the world building and the story dynamics made the story get another gear added to it and that's what borto needs right now for code and breaking up this alliance is how you start getting that framework put together. Now, if you're curious as to how Chainsaw Man pulled this off, you'll want to check out my Chainsaw Man Chapter 98 review, which is on the screen right now.